What is up, YouTube fam? Robbie C here. We are back with day eight of Vlogmas, and today we're talking overstable putting approach discs. Before we dive in, of course, we gotta ask the most important question. How are you doing today, Gene? Are you having a good one? So what is overstable putt and approach discs? What are they for? How are they helpful in the game? These are all great questions that can be asked and I wanna kind of address them, but the heart of this video is gonna be helping you choose a overstable putt and approach disc for you and what you should be looking for in those options. As you saw in the intro, there are quite a few out there and I haven't scratched the surface in grabbing all of them. Now in disc golf, for lots of people who finally feel like they get off of a tee really well, but they haven't really gotten to a point where they can step putt like we talked about in day four or just putt in general. And these approaches can cost us a heap load of strokes while we're out there on the course, which is where this disc comes in handy. Now, overstable putt and approach discs are exactly what they sound like. Overstable meaning that it wants to lean into the angle that you put it on. And so when you take these overstable putt and approach discs and you put them on hyzer, which is where that outside of the edge is down and you throw it, it's going to lean into that angle pretty reliably, which takes us to the most reliable shot in the game that we talked about a lot in disc golf, which is the hyzer. Now we can throw the hyzer either backhand with that outside edge down, we can throw it forehand. Either way, being able to not worry about if I'm throwing it flat, have I turned it over too much? Have I not turned it over enough? Things like that. Throwing a really straight shot can be somewhat tough. I can just throw it out on an edge, let it come back, and I really just have to worry about that distance control, which makes accuracy way more powerful. But with so many options out there, you have to ask yourself, is there a bad one and how do I pick? So I brought along six discs to try them out. Now, my personal choice, as you've heard about here on the channel, is of course, the pig. I love the pig, but we're gonna talk about one of the weaknesses that I see for the pig when it comes to choosing something. And I know, that's a tough spot. When I'm talking about weaknesses of a pig, we know something's in trouble. The options that we have here are the Dynamic Disc Slammer, personal favorite of Trevor Stop. We have the Innova Toro, which is personal favorite of Calvin Heinberg. We have the Zone, which is the personal favorite, most famously, of Luke over on Swanky Disc Golf. We have the Westside Harp, also made famous by a swanky member in Will. We have the Reptilian, I believe it's the Scale. Uh, overstable putt and approach disc, Reptilian disc, manufactured by Gateway. So really, really fun option that a lot of people aren't talking about. And we have the Prodigy A2. Fun fact, if I hadn't fallen in love with the pigs, I think I actually would have been an A2 guy. Uh, this disc is super fun, feels great in the hand. Yeah, really cool Frisbee. We wanna take a quick break from talking about choosing the right overstable approach disc and take a moment to talk about choosing the right app for your next tournament. We want to introduce you to today's video sponsor and that is Tournament HQ. Tournament HQ is your one-stop shop for tournament directors as well as making the burden of getting information for tournament players much easier. Too often do we have to see players walking around the course with an app out as well as a printed out sheet talking about the OP and last minute information that the tournament director may or may not have had available. Running a tournament can be incredibly difficult and there are factors out of your control changing all of the time. Tournament HQ is an app that allows tournament directors to put all relevant tournament information in one place. This means players no longer have to carry out phones and paper making for a frustrating tournament experience and utilizing Tournament HQ is beautiful for your players making it a breeze for them to prepare for their event. They can gather course layouts, whole assignments, and even direct links to PGA Live Score. So whether you're a tournament director or you want to make local tournament directors lives even easier, make sure you head to the link in the description below to find the ultimate tournament companion. All the info you need, just one tap away. So when trying out an overstable putt and approach disc, really one of the first things you want to do is, especially if you can borrow someone's, most players are going to have some form of an overstable putt and approach disc in the bag. You want to grab them and test them out to sort of see, okay, how does this feel in my hand? Uh, is it deeper? You have a disc like the harp that's kind of deep, whereas a disc like the zone is pretty shallow. You can kind of build your preference on that. I personally prefer the deeper discs, especially when I'm throwing these forehand shots, but a lot of people really like the shallow ones because of the fact that it can kind of bounce off your finger. But one of the things that we want to make sure is can we actually hit lines on hyzer? So that silver basket is about 150 feet away from me and we're going to take all six of these discs and we're gonna put them on a little bit of a test against one another. We got that and we're gonna to try to see how many we can get close to the basket. You can see I started that on on hyzer and it skips right there. Scale. 
absolutely parked. Zone, let's see how the zone does. We started that one a little wider, but beauty of overstable discs, as you can see, it's still trying to fight back. Let's go with the Prodigy A2 next. Told you guys, really like that one. Toro, which was Innova's answer for the zone. She's overstable. Last but not least, we're gonna hit them with the Slammer. Oh, we gave that one some height. Let's see if it has a chance. Whew, Slammer came out of my hand real clean, went a little far, let's go up close and see what happens. All right, we've got the zone and the A2 pretty close. Scale a little further away, and then the slammer all the way back there. Let's take these back and see them on a forehand. So for forehands, we're gonna try to go in reverse order, but I'm trying to remember what order I threw them in, so I can't make any promises. Starting off with the slammer, we're gonna hold it out there. Woo, that was hunting. Poros up next. Okay, getting real aggressive trying to throw these in, which is uh, definitely causing some stability issues. Great example here. You can hear and see that the wind really picked up on that shot, even throwing it straight into a gust of a headwind there. It still went straight and faded back towards the basket and probably is no further away than the Toro landed on the other side. Go with the harp. Okay, that one's gonna be a little worse. Feeling some pain in my side, which is not great. I can actually feel it trying to throw these forehands. Gotta be careful. I've not been stretching when I'm doing my forehands lately. And then Vlogmas, we're gonna be throwing a lot of shots. Zone, doing what it needs to, just skipping right up there. Feels really good. Here we go, and the scale. Scale's gonna be pretty parked. Let's see what they look like up close. So coming up here, we got the scale right close to the basket, the zone, pretty easy tap in. Even the A2 with the headwind, really not that far away. Our farthest away option was definitely the harp and even it really wasn't that far away. For perspective, let's see if we can't get a little redemption with the harp. Okay. I wanna talk about another option when it comes to these because a lot of people, when you really try to lean into these discs, it can be very helpful to even throw it off the tee, let's say. But if they're too overstable, that can really kind of fight back. Something like a Zone OS that really isn't trying to fly at all. It's just trying to get to the ground really short. Saki Bomb Slammer, another great example of this. What I have here is an A5. Anyone who's ever thrown an A5 knows, especially in premium plastic, these things have a little bit of beef to them. So this can be a really great alternative if you don't want necessarily the standard overstable putting approach disc, but you still want a disc that when you're throwing it out there, it's reliably fading. That is what you're looking for in this disc is reliable fade. Now, the last option to consider is picking a mold that comes in a variety of plastic types. Why this can be helpful is because you can have one, let's say in premium plastic, that's going to hold that really overstable flight for an incredible amount of time. Having an overstable disc in a base plastic or even a really beat in version can be really nice for a straight flyer because you can throw it and know you can put some power into it and that overstability that's naturally inside of the disc is gonna keep it from burning over and flipping all the way over, which can be a problem for a lot of amateur arms is when they try to throw understable stuff straight when they really beef up the power and because of that, flippy disc becomes sort of unusable. So an overstable beaten disc can be great. And the pig is phenomenal for this because the pig, its most common plastic is R-Pro plastic, which is a base plastic. It's on the higher end of base plastics. Really tacky, really grippy. The problem with the pig is that because it basically only comes in this R-Pro plastic, especially someone like me who's using it a lot, it loses that overstability and beats in pretty quick. Because of that, I actually have three pigs in my bag that do a variety Variety of different flights. I've got this one that my friend Rick Penley died for me that is my current overstable flyer. I've got they call me Mr. Pig that my friend Wes gave me that is in my bag as my straight pig option. And then last but not least, I have Precious Child, which is an R Pro pig as well, Color Glow R Pro. And this is my understable sort of flip up option. So it cycles really well, but the hard part is, is that this one hasn't changed in over a year. This one has recently changed 
changed because in a fit of rage, I actually launched my other one that was in this slot. So, and then this guy changes every few months because I really need that overstable flight. Now, Innova is trying to say, we can't make the pig and premium plastic because of the rim and the things and all that. No, we all know it's because you just don't want to do it. And, uh, a little bit of a bummer because what i have here is a blizzard champion 175 gram pig that's a pig right here in premium plastic and even more so surprising this right here you know what this is I'll let you guys just read yeah that's right that right there that's a star pick. So crazy that something that isn't possible, and yet I'm holding two of them. So, while I'd love for more people to be pick farmers, I'm not sure if Innova wants more people to be pick farmers. So when it comes to your overstable putt and approach disc option, like I said, there isn't really a bad choice. There are tons of options out there. And even stepping up here and throwing a couple options that I don't throw on a regular basis, you saw our furthest option from 150 feet, which is really that distance that you wanna to try to dial in and that this disc can help you with a ton. Her, this putt was like 25 feet away from the basket. And that was one out of 12 shots that we threw. I'll take those odds on the course any day of the week. Make sure when you're choosing your option, you consider the depth, you consider the hand feel, and you consider the plastic type options because all of those really lay into you falling in love with a mold that you can use for years to come. I know I personally have over 50 pigs in my collection and what's nice is I can take a whole stack of pigs out to a field and just work on this shot over and over and over again. It's really great finding that mold, falling in love with it, and really leaning into its reliability. You put a pig in my hands, and most of the time, I'm gonna get exactly where I need to be, and at least one shot, maximum two. With all that being said, let me know in the comments what is your overstable putt and approach disc of choice, and why'd you land on that one? We can probably save some time and some comment space, so why don't we just make like one giant zone comment, and you guys just all reply to it yourselves, because, you know, I get it. It's a great disc, great frisbee just not for me. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in to day eight of Vlogmas. Hope you have a great rest of the day. We'll see you tomorrow. Please make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, we're gonna leave you with the birdie.